So we are going to talk about AI SEO, SEO shortcuts, and more. And I am just going to preface this by saying that all of us that are talking about AI, we think we're talking about artificial intelligence, but for the most part, there we're talking about augmented intelligence or automated intelligence. So there are actually three forms of AI. And I actually learned this from the director of digital at L'Oreal when I was speaking at an event a couple months ago in Atlanta. And um, I think it makes a lot of sense. 99% of the things that we're doing are probably augmented or automated. So for example, if you're using Zapier to automate a lot of your, your tasks, that's literally automation, right? If you're trying to augment your work, for example, when we have a lead that comes in, and I'll show you a screenshot of Slater for, for Single Grain, the ad agency, we actually try to en enhance that lead and add insights there. And that helps us do our job better. That helps build confidence. And therefore that helps us increase conversion rates when we're talking to customers, right? So I'm going to show you how this all works. It doesn't matter if you have a service business or a product business, this all applies. What I'm trying to do here is try to get you one golden nugget to take away here. And I think this hour that we have is going to be a success. And then I was telling Travis that I need to go drive home and see my mom. So quick background on myself. As Travis mentioned, I have an ad agency called Single Grain. And you know that that's that we focus on SaaS, e-commerce. Everyone knows what an ad agency is, right? Uh, I do marketing school with another marketer named Neil Patel. And I do a podcast called Leveling Up. Interestingly enough for Leveling Up, um, if you follow the YouTube channel, if you guys check that out later, I'm going to be interviewing some really cool people in the next couple months because um, we're doing live again, right? So I'm going to have those of you that have followed Peter Diamandis. He's big on longevity, big on the future, right? Sophia Amoruso and some other people. And so that one for me, I just want to talk to interesting people. My whole premise around life is just life is a game. So let's play it, right? That's why it's called Leveling Up. So the first thing I want to talk about here is one of my websites that gets about 18 million visits a year. And this is an affiliate website. And I'm also going to talk about how one single page is making a million dollars in profit annually. Both of these tie in with SEO. And by the way, you might have to rewind this and watch this later because I do talk fast. And if you need me to repeat something, go ahead and ask that in chat as well. But I'm just trying to jam pack this with as much value as possible. So let's keep going. Cool. All right. And then I'm also, by the way, I'm going to give you a bonus here. I'm going to close it off with how marketing is changing a little bit and how you as an SEO, you need to evolve because my background, even though I started in SEO, I continue to branch out, branch out, branch out. I'm happy to talk about that later, but I learned over time that just being an SEO, unfortunately is not enough. That's my opinion. You, and I, I tend to find that SEOs, especially SEOs on Twitter tend to be very bitter people for whatever reason. So if you do find yourself branching out later, you find yourself opening up your mind and you end up becoming more pleasant to hang out with. That's what I believe. And so that's what it is. So that that's a little additional tip here. So proof is in the pudding here. I'm not lying about one of the sites that we have 18 million visits. And I want to share around how the content team is structured and how much we're spending a month on this particular website. And again, this is separate from the ad agency. So there's other stuff that I dabble in. So we basically produce 11 ar new articles a week for this website. Again, it's an affiliate website in the survival niche. Survival could be like tents. It could be like building bunkers. It could be like, how do you treat your water so you can drink it for a long time? Or how you can survive, a, what do we call those? EMP shock, right? So we produce 11 articles a week. Most people think that we produce new articles. Actually, 50% are new, 50% are content refreshes. So content refreshes aren't necessarily a new thing, but I just wanted to show you, this is how we're structured here. Our team composition, and this is rapidly changing, it's only five people for this team. So there's an editor in chief, there's an editor, there's a chief content producer, and this person, this chief content producer helps strategize for the content that we produce for, let's say, TikToks or YouTube shorts or longer form YouTube, right? And then we have a photographer to help us film the new survival stuff that we have, have coming in. Let's say someone sends us a backpack, we would film it. And then we also have a videographer as well. And so for us, even though we started this website in pure SEO, pure blogging, and we started ranking really well for a lot of stuff, we eventually realized that we had to diversify. So it kind of goes back to what I was mentioning earlier about having to diversify your traffic sources. So once you nail one, when, once you really want to start to scale, you start to think about other areas that have strong organic traffic or strong organic reach where your audience is actually hanging out because that's marketing one-on-one. And I think as SEO, sometimes we lose sight of the fact that marketing at the end of the day is just bringing people to the point of sale. It really doesn't matter which channel, right? And so don't, let's not 
hold SEO too holy. Let's be open-minded to other sources. Okay. So monthly spend on this site, about 30 grand a month. And this site generates a couple million dollars a year in revenue. So it's actually very, very, very profitable. And the, the vast majority of the income comes from affiliate. And we're actually trying to, I'll talk about this a little later. We're trying to build out more products or services or buy other companies as well. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about why you should come go audience first and also why you should consider M&A for SEO. If you can think about mergers and acquisitions from a marketing standpoint, you're going to win. And I will tell you as an SEO, you have a leg up on other people. Like I certainly think I do. And I will tell you the majority of my friends that are founders that understand SEO, they are often the deepest thinkers. And I think all of you that are listening to this right now have the potential to do that. I'm not saying you need to go start a business. You certainly can. I think that's probably where you can get the best outcomes. But if you're not looking to start a business, at least you can start to think more like an entrepreneur, right? So um, a lot of different directions that we can go in here. So we do a lot of content refreshing, like I mentioned. We, we often think about updating or consolidating content. Those of you that are more advanced SEOs, that's not necessarily something that's new. Um, what I will say that we're doing that's more interesting, so how we're actually starting to leverage AI now with our content is this is the Marketing School podcast. So you can see this is Neil and I recording. And I know a lot of SEOs, do you either love or hate Neil? That's not the point here. But the point here is the point here is that we use a software called Riverside.fm and we record this. And then Riverside will automatically make an AI transcription and we'll take that AI transcription. Okay. And then my prompt here will be convert the following text into a blog post with key points as headers. And so you can see down here, I literally just cut and paste it. There's nothing special that I'm doing here. I'm just using chat GPT. Fun fact, I pay for chat GPT $20 a month. I actually use Google Bard way more than chat GPT. So I don't know, like type in the chat if you find yourself using Bard more than chat GPT or just whatever you find yourself using more. P type chat GPT or type Bard, type it in the chat. I'm actually interested to see who uses what more. So let's see. Brian's got chat GPT, Jane's chat GPT, Mike's chat GPT. Amanda, Bard is better in my experience. I agree with that. Bard. Okay. So most people still chat GPT because it's the cool thing, right? Well, cat never even heard of Bard. Well, it's free. You can use it. Um, so SEO lady is GPT as well. First time hearing of Bard. So I'll just type it into chat. Right. Sonic Lance, tell everyone in chat what right Sonic is. Cause I have no clue what that is. And if, if, maybe I'll learn something new as well. So thank you for that. Anyway, we'll continue on here. So then what happens is chat GPT will output this, how digital marketing will change in 2023 and beyond. One, that's a pretty good title. Two, as we enter a new year, let's just look at this. It is important to discuss how digital marketing will change in 2023 and beyond. In this article, we'll discuss the key points made by Eric Stu and Neil Patel. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Convest, uh, companies will invest more in data analytics. Okay, great. So this is pretty cool because this is like a five to eight minute podcast and boom, you get a couple hundred words here. And so what then? What we then do is we run it through a output detector. Basically, it's a duplicate content checker. This is from Hugging Face. They're a company that's valued at about $2 billion right now, and they're one of the hot AI companies, right? As so you can see at the very bottom over here, 95% of this is real. 4% is fake. I'm not going to say this is the end-all be-all because some of you might say, well, you know, if you run it through like four or five different duplicate content checkers, you know, one is going to say it's fake. You're probably right, but if it feels good to me, and it looks good to me. And, and one of these, these checkers says it's good. I'm just going to go for it because you don't have the time to run it through four different ones. You're looking for, sometimes you're looking for more efficiency. You don't want to go for too much accuracy. Maybe you want to dial it back sometimes. And I think everything kind of operates on a sliding scale, right? Sometimes when you're running a company, maybe when you're in a zero interest rate policy environment, you want to aim for growth, right? And then the environment that we're in now in, in the, from a macro standpoint, you want to aim for more profitability, right? So sliding scale. Sometimes when you're managing someone, do you want to micromanage them or do you want to delegate, right? And sometimes it's on a sliding scale depending on who you're working with. So I'm going a little into management. So I'll, I'll come back to, to, to SEO here. But my point here is you don't want to... No process is too holy, right? Like you want to be open-minded. You want to be flexible with how you're doing things. That's my whole point around what I just said. So what we've been doing with this now is we've been doing AI enhanced content on our blog just as a test. And we see in Google search console, and I'll have a screenshot of this in, in a little bit. You'll see that it's, it's going up and to the right. And I will tell you that 
this AI enhanced content where 60 to 70% of it is the AI doing the work. And then maybe 20 to 30% is a human in a loop completing the work. It's outperforming our pure human writers. So, and that's pretty impressive. I, I'll, I'll tell you another story here. I had one friend a couple of weeks ago, I was at, uh, I was at an event in Boston and he was spending $14,000 a month with a content marketing agency and then he cut the entire content marketing agency. He's just using an AI product now for $50 a month. I, I think he's maybe, it's a little over-exaggerated, but point is he did cut that content agency for 14 grand. And we're going to see a lot more of this. And in, in a little bit, I'm going to talk about how it's really important for you to continue to push your team on this stuff, because especially if you're the leader of the company, you're the owner of the company, or you're a manager at the company, you have to push on this stuff because the news cycles are 24 to 48 hours or so. And what I might say today might be invalid in tomorrow or might be invalid in a week. And that's just how this stuff is, is going right now. So I'll talk about how you can counteract that or kind of prepare for the future um, with this. So this playbook scales, it works. And I want to talk about how you can also get started with this playbook. Let's assume that you don't have many resources right now um, in your company. I, I'm just curious right now, if you can type in the chat, maybe how many people on your marketing team you can just type a number and you know maybe i'll read off a couple in a second so let's see three under 15 five three three ten one one three okay one so there's a lot of uh there's a lot of one man shows going on five ten or so so here's the deal one of you on the marketing team if, if, if you're solo it's got to be you one of you has got to be pushing this AI stuff forward because what is going to happen is the way we do SEO in the next two to three years or so is going to be completely different. That's what I fundamentally believe. And I'll show you why in a second. So you can use this. I would say if you want to build out a content team, those of you, especially those of you that are, you know, one, one person teams, right? If you want to build out a content team, you can use a service called contentteams.io that's run from a friend of mine. His name's Ewan. And he will actually go out there and he'll put a team for you. He'll put, the, he'll put a team together for you. And you're basically paying anywhere from five to 15 cents a word, which you might argue is usually going to be trash content for that amount. And I've certainly tested that in my early days of doing SEO, but I've been pleasantly surprised at the quality of their content. And it's pretty good. And we've used them in the last couple of months or so. And unfortunately, the AI enhanced content is performing better, but there still is a place where you can go and source writers and then figure out how you can scale your, your content, your content initiatives. Pro blogger jobs board, that's something that we I've used probably for over 10, 10 years or so. And you're paying like 75, 100 bucks or so for a job post. And you can find writers that have written about steel tools or interior design or whatever, right? And that's good. Upwork, it's tried and true, used to be Elance. And we go to Upwork for, for a lot of things, for short form video editors, you can use it for a lot of different stuff. And I found Upwork to be pretty reliable. And I will say this, most agencies, and I think there's probably a lot of agencies that are listening to this right now. There are a lot of agencies that really, all their strategists are based in the United States. And then all the workers are offshore. Like that is a trend that we're like, we're seeing a lot more of that. That used to be a really cool thing 10 years ago. Now it's just a thing, right? Your, your designers, your creatives, your short form video editors can be offshore and you can have the strategists onshore. So take that for what it is. Marketer hired. That's just this place where they will help you find the top two to 3% of marketers. And that's usually for more senior marketers. So I'm going to keep going here because we're 16 minutes in and I want to give some ample time for questions. So those of you that use hrefs here, and those of you that don't, let's just look at the very right side of this. So this is one page that drives about a million dollars a year in profit, profit, not revenue, profit on one page. Okay. So on the very right side over here, you can see that this single page ranks for about 3,300 keywords. And on the left side of that, the traffic value of it is $460,000, meaning that you'd pay Google $460,000 a month for this traffic. I can't tell you what the keyword is because my friend would kill me but I can tell you the story. And so let's talk about this mastermind trip over here. So a couple of years ago, we were in, we were in Mexico and we had a mastermind. There's about eight of us that went. So some people flew in from Ukraine. Funny enough, the guy that flew in from Ukraine is like the right-hand man of Zelensky now. Um, so, so those of you that have seen the early negotiations 
for with Russia and Ukraine, he was actually in the picture wearing a hat. And we text him from time to time seeing how he's doing. But anyway, I digress. So, so we have people coming from all around the world. People come from Germany, whatever, right? And everyone's an entrepreneur. So this trip, you know, people are sharing in, sharing in, ta- they're sharing tactics that you can't share publicly because what happens with marketers is we like to, once one thing is shared, we all like to pollute things, right? We all jump on it. And then the tactic becomes not as, not as efficient anymore. Let's call it that way. Or the efficacy comes down. So we, we do these activities during the mastermind after we share this information, we eat good food and all that. Right. And we got on two separate boats and we went to go look at turtles and manatees and dolphins. And on my boat, let's just call this guy, Andrew. Let's call this guy, the second guy, Bob. So Bob, as we're you know heading out, Bob's like, Hey, Andrew, you guys do a good amount of revenue a year. They do a couple hundred million a year. And so Andrew, what keyword do you want to rank for? And Andrew's like, I want to rank for this keyword. And Bob's like, okay. So they, they do a deal in concept and in principle. Three months later, Bob is ranking number one for that keyword. And that has basically put $4 million of profit in his pocket. Now, my point of saying all this is, yes, SEO is cool. Yes, affiliate is cool. But at the end of the day, I'm an introvert, right? So I'm an introvert, but I understand the value of relationships. And so I would highly encourage you. I don't care what age you are, because even when I was 26, 27 years old, when I was broke, I still put together teams or not teams, but small masterminds of people where people would share stuff. So at 26, 27 years old, I'm like, okay, I'm a director of marketing. I'm going to get more director of marketings around me, maybe some CMOs. And we're just going to share what's working, what's not working, what we're struggling with. And I had people come over to my place. And I remember the, the very first time we just had, all we had to eat was a half eaten bag of chips. And, you know, the next time we, we, we had some Mediterranean food, right? So it got a little better over time. My point of saying all this is that maybe if you can get a group of five, six people, go to a happy hour and you can be the organizer, you can be the connector. You start putting together these little micro masterminds And that is how you're going to build relationships for the long term, because I don't care how good you are as an SEO. Ultimately, it still comes down to who you know, and who you know is what is going to open doors for you. And me, as an introvert, if I can do it, you can do it too. A lot of people think I'm extroverted. I'm actually not. Um, I prefer to just stay at home. So anyway, that's the bit on the masterminds. I highly encourage you to do it. Maybe you'll make $4 million in profit from a page. Who knows? But you just never. But by the way, I'll I'll throw in another another thing. I just tweeted something this morning about, hey, here's what's cool in marketing, programmatic SEO, AI and enhanced content. I talk about some other stuff in there, right? And then Ryan Dice, who co-founded the Traffic and Conversion Conference, he's like, want to speak about this in January? Like, that is the power of knowing people, right? And so I didn't expect that. I didn't expect anything from that. It's just like randomly just thought about it, right? So anyway, all right. So now let's talk more about how you can enhance SEO using AI. Am I going fast? Yes. Can you rewind this later? Yes. So, so I found this tweet a couple of weeks ago, and this actually motivated us as a team. And Jane's on this call right now too, um, Jane, Jane, Sarah, and she's been helping to quarterback and project manage a lot of this. And so the tweet here simply says, we took a website from zero to 750K a month, SEO traffic using 100% AI generated content. So 7K total pages generated, hit 300K after six months, hit 750K after 12 months, 4,000 keywords and positions one to three. Here's the breakdown. Do I think this leg- is legit? Yes. Do I think they're, they might get torched a little bit? Also, yes. Right? Because I've seen this movie a lot of times where I might get a page. I remember I got a page to like 20, 30,000 visits a month. And this, the, the site was like maybe a like, couple weeks old. And then boom, the next day it dropped to like zero, like one to two visits a day or so, something like that. Right? So that doesn't mean we can't learn from this. And what I've always said is that As an SEO, yes, you should understand white hat SEO, but you should also understand black hat SEO because you can then take the concepts from black hat SEO, but then apply it in a white hat way. And so let's rewind a second and think about what Google has said about AI content. What they have said is that as long as it's helpful to human beings, it's okay. They, and they've reversed their stance from a year ago. It's like, oh, no, no AI, no AI content. But now cat's out of the bag. It's like, okay, fine, you know. And if you think about it, do you care if this phone is built by a human's hand or a robot's hand? In fact, you probably want a robot to build it because it's more accurate. It's more predictable. Do you care if a robot builds your home or a human builds it? In fact, you probably want a robot to build it instead. 
right? And so it doesn't matter as long as it's helpful to humans. These, these robots are here to help humans. And so going into this one a little bit, this guy is, he co-founded a software called byword.ai. So that's B-Y-W-O-R-D.ai. I'm going to drop this in the chat over here, byword.ai. And um, we'll start to get to questions in a little bit. I'll speed it up. But byword.ai will basically help you generate a lot of AI content, right? So the way we're looking at this is we're, we're not necessarily going to use byword.ai, but how do we go about using programmatic SEO? And so, oh my God, programmatic SEO, it's such a new thing. No, 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 no. It's not new at all. We're doing this like 12 years ago, right? It, programmatic SEO was being used by a lot of, when I used to work at a media company, we programmatically generated a ton of different pages. Or if you're like Expedia, you're generating a lot of different travel pages, like things to do in Rome, right? Or if you're TripAdvisor or whatever, or if you're Glassdoor, you're generating a lot of templates, right? That's no different than what people are doing now with programmatic SEO. It's just that this resource has become available to the common person, you and me. And what used to be really costly is no longer as costly, right? And so for us, we're trying this. We're doing AI enhanced content. We're trying programmatic SEO. And so for us, it's still very early days right now, but you can see the graph going up and to the right. Now, is this like hundreds of thousands of impressions yet? No, we're testing this on a subdirectory on our site. And now like talking to, to Jane on, on our squad, I'm like, how do we do more of this? Sure, we have budget constraints, but how do we do more of this? How do we maybe reduce budget in other areas? And how do we level up the budget here? How do we double and triple down on what's working and start to taper off what's not working? So I'm like, okay, I've been, I personally been testing these other consultants in other areas, you know, Twitter consultants, uh, video consultants. I'm just like, but this is really working. Why don't we just spend more money on this? So that's a lesson in business, right? Sure, you might run a couple of tests in other areas, a couple of experiments, and maybe only one in 12 experiments works for you, but that one in 12, it's, it looks really good and it looks like it has potential to really scale. You go all in on it. You bet all in on it. You put all the chips on it, and that's what it is. So I'm going to continue on. There's more. But before there's more, take out your phone. I think I have something that's coming up here. Yeah, I do have something. So there's here's our little newsletter over here that we update every week with tests that we're running, content that I'm putting out. We don't have anything to sell you there. Um, and yeah, it's just learnings, right? Stuff that I'm learning, podcast stuff, the video stuff. I just love learning marketing because, well, it's fun. It's like a game, right? Um, okay, so more AI stuff over here. here. I'll leave this up for like five more seconds. Five, four, three, two. One. Okay. So more AI stuff. And um, I'm going to pause for a second. Do y'all want me to keep going here or do you want me to go, go to Q&A? Just type it in the chat. I'll, I'll check chat in a second. So keep going or Q&A. Okay. So Mike says, keep going. I'll come back in a second. So keep going. All right. So this is not to brag, but I went to chat GPT. This is a couple months back. I was like, who are the top digital marketing agencies in the United States? Oh, who's there in the red? Single grain. Now, would I say these are the absolute top digital marketing agencies in the United States? Not necessarily, but would I say they're all pretty good at SEO? Yes. And so if we want to think about chat optimization, whatever we want to call it, chat engine optimization, CEO, it probably doesn't work. But if you think about it, how have search engines ranked in the past? Right? And I'm going to, I'm going to use another example over here. I ask another question. What are the best marketing podcasts? Oh, marketing school. Okay, well, on this trip, we, we did another mastermind in Turkey a couple months ago, and we, we, we had a long drive to the hotel, and we were just talking. And I think there's three of us sitting in the car, and we're like, man, what, what is it that helps people rank? Like, why is it that I have these two over here? Because it wasn't intentional. Okay, well, a couple reasons. One, it comes down to citations at the end of the day. So citations mean not just links, but reviews. Links, reviews, mentions, number of pages, whatever it is exactly. So marketing school, we've done over 2,500 episodes. There's a lot of pages. And then you also can use the double E-A-T, right? So expertise, right? You, you talk about authority, you talk about trust, right? And so Neil has that in the marketing space. I kind of have that in the marketing space as well. Okay, so maybe that's why we're number one. Gary V has a lot of authority as well. And social media marketing podcasts, they have a lot of reviews. They have a lot of five-star reviews on, on Apple podcasts. 
And so if you want to think about ranking highly, I would just say, you know, at the end of the day, this stuff's pretty primitive, but think about citations. I'll think about double EAT as well. And that's how it works. And I will tell you, all of these websites over here, they have pretty strong domain authority. And well, what, what does that mean? Well, it comes down to good links and good content, the two most important factors when it comes to SEO. Okay. So I'm going to continue on here and give you a couple other examples to hopefully plant the seed for you, but AI for sales. And so recently we had a lead come in. Uh, it was a home decor company, Lumens. They do modern lighting, ceiling fans, and all that. So what happens when a lead comes in is that it will get pushed into Slack and then we will automatically enrich it using the open AI API. And so then what happens, we'll do a, a, we'll say, okay, this is the vertical that the company is in. Here's a quick description. And here's some marketing ideas for our salespeople to talk about when they get on the call, because ultimately what sales is, is building confidence. And people want to know if they can trust you and they want to feel like they can nod their head constantly when they're talking to you versus shake their head and be like, whoa, like, what did you say there? And so our salespeople come off less salesy and they come off more markety, which is what they want because they're vetting us for marketing services. All right. So like, it really doesn't matter if you have a services business or a product business. Like I used to hate my service business. And I used to think I was telling Travis before the call, oh yeah, yeah. We used to have a competitor to clear scope. Right. But it's like, sure. It was going well. We could have grown it, but it's like, no, like the grass is greener where you water it. Right. So my point here is that Sure. Some of you might be like, oh, you know, I should go build a software nest. I should go do this education thing because I know there's a lot of agencies that are listening to this. I'm telling you, if your agency is going well, double and triple down on it because you can kind of build stuff around your agency where you feel like you're building products, right? This is kind of like we feel like we're building product here. So that's AI for sales. This is another separate thing over here around AI video editing. My friend who is, he does a lot of work with like Amazon or TikTok. Literally, they're like, the official UGC partner of TikTok. And he's really creative. And he's like, you should try the software called opus.pro. So opus.pro. And what it does is you can upload a long form video, let's say it's 60 minutes or so. And then it will automatically take the captions. It'll find a hook for you. And it'll tell you how viral it thinks a video will go. And it ultimately saves you a lot of time. And it, I think there's a free version where, give you, where they will give you a couple credits or so. So that's opus.pro. That was another thing I wanted to add in. I know we want to talk about SEO, but I wanted to give you maximum value here. So that's that. AI for customer success. And so what we built here is those of you that have a call recorder, I, I think I saw fireflies coming. I think people are talking about call recorders, right? So if you have a call recorder, they probably have an API. So what we do is we sync that API with the open AI API and we ask it to sentiment score the call and we ask it to summarize the call. We ask it to put in the action items as well. And this also gets put into a spreadsheet. And so you can see each week for each client, how's the call rated one through 10. If it's lower than a seven, it's a problem. If it's like a seven to eight, it's neutral. If it's a nine to 10, it's green, right? But if it's red or yellow three weeks in a row, so if it's like a one to, one to like a one to eight or so, then it is on our customer success team to figure out what the heck is going on with that client. And so now we're starting to kind of make our services business more into a product internally, if that makes any sense. Because when you have a lot of humans in the room, there's a lot of emotion that's going, oh yeah, yeah, the client's going well. Oh, it's going well. You're incentivized to say that because you better cover your butt, right? You don't want to tell that when things are going well. Like it's only when things are going bad and things are on fire, that's when, well, you can't really hide it anymore. But by that time, it's a little too late, right? So that's that. Um, I'm going to continue on here. So what I wanted to talk about earlier was the whole concept of how, even if you're a one-person show right now on your marketing team, you kind of need to be the AI operator. Every company needs to hire an AI operator. And this is a thread that I wrote on, on Twitter, or I guess maybe I'll rewrite it on threads now, those of you that are signed up for that. But um, every company needs to have an AI operator that is basically the evangelist that's pushing things forward. And so this is the person that's staying on top of the news cycle and saying, hey, we should try this. Hey, here's this idea over here. Or maybe, maybe quarterbacking and getting a group of people together to talk about this stuff. And because if you're not on top of it, again, a month goes by, two months go by, three months go by, a year goes by, and you might think the way that you're doing SEO is, is very novel. I'm telling you, it's going to change in the next year or two. And going back to that conversation we were having on the way to, to our hotel in Turkey, 
we're just like, man, there's this honeymoon period of maybe two to three years and search is just going to fundamentally change. Because if you think about like, it's been 30 ish years or so, maybe a little over 30 years where we've had 10 blue links and you've had the search box. It's been the same user experience. It's time for it to change. And most of us don't like change, but you either adapt or you die. It is what it is. And so got to have an AI operator. If you're one person, it's probably got to be you paying attention to what's going on, subscribing to the right newsletters out there, talking to the right people and finding out what your peers are doing. All right. AI working groups, they kind of go hand in hand here. So we have an AI working group in our company where it's mandatory that we meet every single week and sales, marketing, finance, client services, we're sharing what's working for our clients. So for example, for our clients right now, we're trying to implement programmatic SEO. We're trying to implement Microsoft Clarity where we'll come up with insights for them. And then we'll try to implement those insights, right? And so we're trying to, we're trying to edge this stuff into our clients and say, hey, we'll do this as a pilot. We'll do it for free for a little bit. And if you like it, we'll talk about doing it at a larger scale. How does that sound? So that's that. Um, Skynet isn't far-fetched. Those of you that might've seen this, but um, the, we'll just read this, right? So the Air Force trained an AI drone to destroy SAM sites. So surface to air missile sites. Human operators sometimes told the drone to stop. The AI then started attacking the human operators. So then it was trained to not attack humans. It then started attacking comm towers so humans couldn't tell it to stop. So anyway, I mean, point point being, it's it's, it's not that far-fetched. And uh, well, I mean, it just shows you the capabilities long-term and hopefully it gets you thinking a little more. I'm going to... I'm probably going to wrap it up right after this M&A for SEO because I want to leave some time for questions. But M&A, also known as mergers and acquisitions, if you can learn this as an SEO, as a marketer, you are the next level because you have to learn how to source deals. You have to learn how to evaluate and due diligence deals. You have to learn how to negotiate. You have to learn how to be really creative. And I think it's just really fun. And so if you can add this wrinkle, yeah. You 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 tell me if you can add this wrinkle. You message me later, I will find you a job that pays you a lot of money. A lot of money. Okay. So you just tell me after. Anyway, growth through acquisitions, not as scary as it sounds. So I'm not going to talk about these. These are kind of deal terms, right? So what I want to talk about from an SEO standpoint is let's say you are a pet SaaS business and you're at a, about a $3 million ARR run rate. Okay. So you spend a lot of money on ads and you decided that you don't want to spend as much money on ads because marketing is getting harder. So you then find a website that is getting a good amount of traffic. Let's say the website's getting, I don't know, 500,000 visits a month or so right here. So this is what I, this is a slide that I wanted. So you find a website that's getting 500,000 visits a month. And they're doing about a million dollars in revenue. So you might be saying, oh, well, you know, maybe I need to pay a million dollars for this website. The website does about $200,000 in profit. The reality is, if you start to understand this M&A stuff, you don't actually need to pay a million dollars out of profit. That's what you think when you first start to learn about this stuff. The reality is that businesses are built off of multiples. And so on a $200,000 profit company, you might put a 3x profit multiple on it, meaning that $200,000 times three equals $600,000. Now you still might be saying, Eric, I don't have $600,000. Well, the terms are what matter oftentimes more than the price itself. So let's say you say, okay, well, you know, I can, I have $60,000. Great. You can put 10% down and then you can get the rest financed by the seller. And so what that means is that on the, let's say so you got 60K, right? 60K, the rest of it, then the 540 or so, you would finance maybe over three, four years or so. And then you just have a monthly payment and you might pay zero interest, 0% zero interest. You might pay a couple a couple percentage points. That's fine. Or what else you can do? Let's say you don't even have the $60,000. You could defer the down payment for $60,000 for 30 to 45 days and then find some ways to maybe sell off some of the assets in the company, get some money. Maybe I'll borrow some money from Travis, right? And then I can basically make the transaction $0 out of pocket. So why am I saying this all to you? Like, what does this have to do with SEO or marketing? It has everything to do with SEO marketing because what you can do is you can use an Ahrefs, you can use a, a SEMrush or anything like that and go find a, a site that has good traffic that ranks for the keywords that you want and just go buy it. And especially if they're monetized off of Google AdSense, they really haven't understood how to monetize it well. And you can do more with it, with the products and the services that you sell. You can go buy the attention out there. 
And I invested in a company called acquire.com. You can go use them. They're like the Zillow for M&A. And you can do that. I would just recommend go, go, going to source the stuff yourself. You probably know what to buy, but go do that. And if you can do this stuff, you are now not just an SEO, you are now a business SEO. And it's worth a lot more money. And you can focus on things that are better than fighting people on Twitter because that's stupid. Um, so that's that. So anyway, I'm going to move on from this. I'm just going to leave these slides up over here at the very end. This is, you know, I had all this stuff about building a brand, but um, you can follow me. You can text me um, at Eric O S I U on Twitter or on Instagram. And then you can scan that for the newsletter again. And we're going to open up for questions now. So Travis, I am going to pass it back to you. Awesome. Yeah. Great job with the presentation. Definitely agree with the M and a approach. Uh, I think like Epic Gardening is one of the best examples I can kind of see in the space is kind of leveraging. Um, anyways, I kind of kick it off. David has a question. What do you think of trans voicing solutions out there that can convert video to other languages or any solutions that you like? Nothing yet. We're just starting to look into it. Like I would certainly love to translate all of my YouTube videos and podcasts into Spanish and Portuguese, maybe even German as well. And hopefully, well, I think we'll get there eventually. I don't think we're quite there yet. So we haven't been doing a lot of translation. That's that's actually be more of a Neil question. Maybe we'll cover that on on marketing school in a future episode. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, one person I see doing that really well is Mr. Beast on YouTube. Yeah. I'm not sure exactly what his workflow. So that'd be someone to kind of study. Yeah, he, you know, he has an episode. agency. He has an agency that does that for people. Oh, nice. Um, and then Noah asked. Google says a lot of things like it doesn't care about AI generated content. Um, do you believe them? And they kind of like changed their stance um, early this year. And kind of now, now they say that AI content's okay. Um, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, you, you never can believe them completely. And I mean, they're incentivized to say what they need to say. So I think that the proof is in the pudding. You're seeing people grow their traffic exponentially right now. And I think it's a honeymoon period for the next year or two where people that have a strong domain authority can really take advantage. And we're certainly trying to do that right now. And then search just changes. And yeah, then then it's just going to be completely different from what we know. Awesome. And then Sandy asked, what hosting would you recommend for a site with 2 million pages built on WordPress that has phone support? Because the AWS does not have phone support. Yeah, I can't really. I mean, we use Kinsta. I don't know if they have phone support, but Kinsta is great for, for WordPress. There is also WP Engine. So they're kind of a, they're kind of really well known in the WordPress space for hosting. You could check them out. We used to use them, but we work, we moved over to Kinsta just because it's cheaper. So yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And Steve made a point about Mr. Beast pays voice actors to dub the videos. He actually paid the famous voice actor that did Spider-Man in like Brazil or something. And then when people are listening to voices, like, oh my God, it's Spider-Man. So <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, that's brilliant. And then what are some specific examples of say SEO shortcuts that have been proven to be effective, like boosting websites ranking quickly? Yeah, I mean, okay, well, I'll tell you like the shortcut for me would be go buying, buying a website. So for example, I used to have a senior living website and- we found a website that was ranking highly, like number three or four for the word senior living. So I think I ended up paying like $10,000 for it. And then we captured that ranking once we redirect it. We, re we redirected it. So like that was a shortcut, right? And what you could do is you can go buy a, a, a site with strong domain authority and put a bunch of content on it. Or the reverse of that is you can buy a site that has a ton of content on it. And then you can put it on your site that has a strong, that has strong domain authority. So you can, that is a shortcut in itself. And then kind of what I talked about earlier with the programmatic SEO, um, there's a really good post that was recently, maybe yesterday, put up by Kevin Indig and someone else about how programmatic SEO works, a lot of tools that they use, and a lot of a lot of examples. So if you just type in Kevin in here, I'm just going to do this, Kevin Indig programmatic SEO, you should be able to find it. It's a Substack post. Yeah, just go, you use that query, you should be able to find it. You, you're all SEOs, so. Awesome. And then Jane um, dropped in from your team. What tools are you most excited about right now? Nothing. I mean, I, the, the, 
the most exciting thing to me at the moment is threads <laughs> and because it came out yesterday, but that just because it's novel. So usually the way you answer this question is whatever comes to mind first. So. Yeah. Um, and then Harry has any quick wins for growing domain authority or backlinks? Skeptical about buying links, lots of mixed messages from SEOs worldwide about buying links versus uh, like where you kind of think about that. I think you need to question what every SEO says. If you find yes. that people are being successful with buying links and you find that it's mixed messages everywhere, you have to ask yourself why, and then you have to go find out for yourself. That's all I can say. I agree with that. Definitely have to experiment. And then David has a follow-up question. Um, he's tried using ChatGPT to evaluate websites and make recommendations on keyword opportunities, but it, it, it was unable to. Are there any AI solutions that can do this? I don't think we're quite there yet with a lot of that. I, I mean, you know, chat GPT is building, they, there's a lot of plugins. So when Ahrefs or SEMrush has a plugin, or maybe they create their own GPT version, that that's how you're going to do keyword research. I think we're going to see a lot of companies build GPTs, um, like private, private LLMs, basically large language models. And, and so you can try with Bard. So Bard is like, hey, come up with some keyword ideas, show me the competition, blah, blah, blah. But it hallucinates, right? So I've actually done that. I was like, come up with a hundred uh, keywords that are low competition, high intent, and show me the make a table, show me the volume, and show me how competitive it is. And it actually did it. But then when you ran it through a, a like an Ahrefs, for example, to kind of cross reference, it didn't match up. Hmm. Yes. And then uh, Kate has a question. What are your thoughts on blogs these days? Do you find text based blog content as effective at attracting organic inbound traffic? Or is there too much blog content competition out there right now? I think there's too much competition. I think if we didn't have strong domain authority, we'd probably abandon our blog, just being honest. And I, if I were starting from scratch today, Kate, I would focus on where the organic reach is strong. So threads right, it literally just came out. You, you can bet the organic reach is going to be strong. Uh, so threads, Twitter, LinkedIn, shorts. So YouTube, shorts, TikToks, reels. And those are kind of the strong areas that I would go after. You, you, but also keep in mind, you have to understand where your audience is hanging out. I'm more overgeneralizing right now, but there are billions of blogs, right? And podcasts could be another one, but it just takes a long time to grow organically. We've been, I've been doing podcasts for over 10 years now. And I will say though, there's like less than 10 million podcasts. So that's another thing. So, Yeah. And then uh, Steve has a, a question, kind of the nitty gritty. My website has great domain authority and traffic is doubling month over month since I purchased it and started using chat GPT to generate AI augmented content. Is it worthwhile to set up AdSense or just hold off until eligible for Medivine? I would challenge you and say, why why go AdSense when you can go beyond? Well, I would also, I think it's Brad, right? So Brad, how much traffic is that site getting per month right now? And you know, maybe I can, I can be a little more specific, but I, I think the way, okay, going, I, I wanted to share an example around like Mr. Beast and Logan Paul. And so these guys are in their early twenties or mid twenties now, and they're going for audience first, they're building the audience and then they're building the, the business second. And just, that just shows you the power of, of having an audience. And so Mr. Beast has recently said, I was watching a video where you can't pay him enough to do a video because a video that he does might get a hundred, 200, 300 million views and brands. He wants to charge brands like five, $10 million for that. And they just can't pay it anymore. And they can't. So if they're like, he's like, well, if they can't pay me what I'm worth, then like, I'm just gonna start building my own products. So that's why he's got feastables. That's why he had the, the burger company, which I believe he shut down, but yep. you can control your margin more and you can control the product experience. So why wouldn't you do that? So sure. Maybe the next level is you go affiliate, and then maybe you start to build out your own products and own services long-term. I, I just think if you're monetizing strictly off of ads, like we, we monetize off of ads on marketing school and it's, it's good for us because people like to pay a lot for podcast ads, but I would prefer that we push our own stuff, but because it's a partnership between Neil and I, we're, we're okay with that. So, um, but if you have your own thing, I'll just push your own stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I completely agree with that. And then Jen has another question. What are you uh, just over? What does not work? For SEO anymore? What does not work for SEO? So the old way of doing SEO where you spin your content, ChatGPT is kind of the new way of spinning content because it, it, it looks legit. 
and buying crappy links. And so spamming, buying a lot of crappy links doesn't work. And what else doesn't work as well? Those are kind of the main things. It's It really comes down to content and links at the end of the day. So taking shortcuts doesn't really work. So like, even if you go buy a website, which is kind of considered a shortcut, you still have to put in the work. I think my, my early days of doing SEO, I try to think of every shortcut and every single way to game the system. Also because I wanted to learn a lot. And I've just learned through that experience that it's just worth it to take the long approach in anything that you do. Same with business, same with life, same with marketing. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, and then uh, Bennett says, I'm new to SEO. I'm just starting to develop my company's SEO strategy. What is one thing you'd recommend I focus on? Should I try and focus, follow best practices or look for any type of shortcuts like you just mentioned? Um, but Wait, where so he, he, where he, they he just started a new company? Uh, he just started at a new company and is the is developing their SEO strategy. Yeah, you got to get some quick wins or else you're going to get fired. Um, so and I'm just being really raw here. But like, I, I remember when I was when I was 25, I was I was leading um, marketing at a startup, and I, I didn't ask for that job. I came in as an SEO, right? And a month into it, the guy made me that the head of marketing, and I had no idea how to manage people, no idea how to run an affiliate program, no idea, no idea is this, no idea that, right? Um, point being. A month after that, he said, if you don't hit numbers, we're going to have to let you go. And I'm like, dude, like I've just been here. I just got here. Like I'm not responsible for like all the other bad marking that you did in the past. But I didn't fight him on it. I was like, okay, well, I can either one, I can cry about it or two, I can do something about it. So um, I bet the entire company on YouTube ads and it worked, right? So we just like shot up from there. My point of saying this is that your time to value as an SEO, you think about a product. If you use a product and it takes six months to get value from it, how happy are you going to be? And so you got to think about like, if I'm investing in a new, in, in someone new and they're not really doing something in the first, like really 60 to 90 days or so, I'm starting to get really antsy. And so you might say SEO is a three, six month game or whatever it is. And you might do all these analyses and, and, and all this stuff. My point of this is saying you should do that and you should become more of a T-shaped marketer where you understand other elements where you can get some quick wins and show some numbers. So you find that your boss is nodding your head or so your boss is nodding their head and being like, oh, this person's smart and they're adding value. It's really important that you add value quickly and you get some quick wins. And oftentimes that is not just doing an audit or a strategy. It means you might have to dig into some other areas where you find some other opportunities. So that that's that. It's not the answer that you want. It's a little complex, but... I think it's the right answer. Yeah, I agree with that. Quick wins is definitely where you should focus most of the time. Um, kind of wrapping up, this might be the last question. Uh, you mentioned the outdoor site you have publishing 11 articles per week. How do you ensure content quality when you're kind of scaling content or you're leveraging a lot of like AI, but how do you ensure content quality? I think it's really important to have a human in the loop. And that's what we do internally and also for, for that website as well. So you have an editor that's kind of spot checking and basically queuing the content. So what happens when the, the marketing school example that I shared earlier, we once we send it to a human, they'll check it, they'll run it through a duplicate content checker, but then we'll start to add links to it. We'll start to add statistics to it as well. And we'll start to add images. We'll start to embed videos. And so it legit looks like a real blog post. And it reads like a real blog post and it adds value. Like we're not trying to fake anyone out here. Like it's pretty good. So now before we wrap this up, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. So you don't miss out on more great content from the industry's best SEOs, content marketers, and content strategists. The ClearScope webinar series happens every week and helps SEO content creators of all skill levels advance their knowledge. Hope to see you tune in next time.